Hi everyone, Matt Watson here from CarWow. I've brought together six of the latest and greatest electric cars to answer two questions I bet you probably all have. The first is, what is the real world range of these cars? Hmm, how far can you drive them until they run out of battery? Battery power too low? Come on, no, no! Also, if you do run out of battery, what happens? Do they suddenly stop working and you lose things like power steering? The car won't move because the motors are actually just locked. We're going to drive these cars from this service station, which is on the outskirts of London, up north, and see how far they'll go before they conk out. Wish me luck. Before we start this test, I just want to point something out. We have charged these cars to full overnight, and then we've left them overnight, and they have depleted some of the battery level, not much, but they all do have over 95% of charge. So that's still good enough. Right guys, let's head off. Now to make sure this test is fair, we're gonna try and drive in a very similar way. The cars are set into their most energy efficient setting. Also, we have the temperature set to 20 degrees. We have our phones connected to the stereos like you would have in your own car. We're going to try and do it as scientifically as possible. There will be a few variables. One thing I should point out though, is that the temperature is saying seven degrees. Now electric cars don't really like cold temperatures. They work best between 15 and 25 degrees. However, in England, the average annual temperature is about 10 degrees. This is a fair test for people who are going to buy these cars and run them in England. Now, as part of this test, what I'm also going to do is drive each car for a certain section, around 40 miles, just so I can assess each car and give you a little review of them to tell you what they like to drive. Now, as we head out onto the motorway, we're actually going to put the cars into cruise control, set it to the speed limit for whichever road we're driving on. They should automatically brake and accelerate and steer to keep themselves at a certain speed. So now's a good time for me to give you a quick rundown of what this Leaf is like to drive. This is the extended range version, which means a 62 kilowatt hour battery and a claim range of 240 miles. It costs 36,000 pounds, which seems like quite a lot for a Nissan hatchback, but it has a 217 horsepower electric motor, which is good for 0 to 60 in 7.3 seconds. And this makes it feel pretty nippy in town, though its suspension can feel a bit bouncy over bumps. It does smooth out on the motorway though, and overall this Nissan is actually okay to do long distances in. I've jumped out of the Leaf, I'm now in the Jaguar I-Pace. It kicks off at £61,000. So you've got a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack on this thing, which means it can do a range of around 290 miles. You've got two electric motors and combined you've got 400 horsepower. 0 to 60 is 4.8 seconds. That is quick. Also, the steering sharp, it is a fun electric car to drive. You can trust me on that, guys. It is fun. Now, one thing that does annoy me slightly about this car is the infotainment system. I don't find it that easy to use while driving because there's very little icons that you have to press. But other than that, it's quite a nice car to travel in. According to the battery bar, I've got around 75% of charge left, which has given me a range of 151 miles. I've now jumped into the Mercedes EQC. This has two electric motors, four wheel drive. Though, unlike all the other cars here that are four wheel drive, it can run in front wheel drive mode rear wheel drive mode or four wheel drive mode, whichever it thinks is the best way to maximize economy. Now in terms of the performance, this car has 408 horsepower in total, 0 to 60, 5.1 seconds. It's also got an 80 kilowatt hour battery. Now according to Merck, this car should be able to do 259 miles. We're not quite doing that, I don't think. I've got 48% of battery remaining and we've got range of 101 miles remaining and we've done 96 miles. In terms of comfort, it's the most comfortable car I've been in so far, and it's really quiet. The suspension's brilliant. I like the interior as well. And this is easily the best infotainment system of the cars I've been in so far. If you want one of these EQCs, they're not cheap though. They start from 62,000 pounds. I thought I'd let you guys know that we have bought along our Jeep Wrangler Long Termer as a support vehicle, and in it is this diesel generator because if we run out of electricity we may need a top up and this is basically the EV's version of a jerry can. Now I kid you not, breakdown firms now have to carry these things to help recover stricken electric vehicles. Hopefully though we're not going to need it because it's blooming heavy to try and move out the back of here. 
Well, I've now jumped into the Audi e-tron and you can probably tell it's starting to go dark because it's almost five o'clock. This car starts from 66,000 pounds, has air suspension as standard, which is great over the bumps, very quiet as well, very similar to the Mercedes. There's not much in it between them in terms of comfort. This car is powered by two electric motors, permanent four wheel drive, 408 horsepower, 060 takes 5.7 seconds. The interior design of this thing is nice. It's a little bit more minimalist than the Mercedes. I actually prefer the Mercedes ever so slightly. I think it has a slightly better infotainment system, though this is still pretty good. One feature that does stand out on this car though is the fact that you've got digital mirrors. Instead of a normal mirror, it's a camera there and it feeds into a screen here and you can move it around like you can with a normal mirror, which is kind of cool, but it does take a bit of getting used to. Also, if someone knocks it off, that's gonna cost quite a bit to replace. This car has a 95 kilowatt hour battery. So Audi claims this thing will do about 250 miles on a full charge. Now, so far, the chip computer saying I've done about 124 miles and we have 43% of the battery left and a range of 95 miles. Let's see what the other cars are doing. Nissan Leaf, what is your remaining range and charge? Currently on the Leaf, we've got 36% remaining, giving a range of 91 miles. I think that's gonna drop out first. How's the Jaguar doing? We've got somewhere under half the battery now, and it's telling me I've only got 79 miles left. I may be wrong, it could be the Jag that drops out first. We're gonna find out, it's exciting. How is the Kia doing? The e Nero has 52% battery left and a range of 132 miles. What is the Tesla saying? So we've got 49% left on the battery and it's giving me a range of 147 miles. Finally then, what is the Mercedes saying? So the Mercedes now has 33% of its battery left and it's saying that'll get me 74 miles. Ooh, that's dropped quite a bit. Well, let's plow on and see what happens. It's pitch black now, as you can see, and I'm in the Kia e-Nero. So all cars have their lights on, which will reduce the battery a little bit, but not by a huge deal, hopefully. So this is the cheapest car here. It starts from 33,000 pounds and you get a 64 kilowatt hour battery, which is supposedly good for a range of 282 miles. So far, I've done 159 miles. I've got 41% of battery remaining. It's saying that I've got a range of 101 miles to go. I'll tell you what, this is a really, really good car. It is the slowest one here, but it still does 0 to 60 in 7.5 seconds. It doesn't feel quite as nippy as the Nissan Leaf, even though power is the same at 204 horsepower. It's also front wheel drive as well. I do actually prefer the interior layout of this Kia. There's very little in it though, in terms of comfort and noise. So if you're thinking about buying an electric car and you wanna see what's available and save an average of 3,600 pounds, click on the pop-out banner up there to check out the best deals on carwow.com. Finally, I'm in the Tesla Model 3. Now, what we're gonna do, rather than just drive at the motorway in conk out, which could be dangerous because there might not be a hard shoulder, and we don't really wanna be stopping on the hard shoulder of the motorway. The plan is that we are going to head to the nearest charge station that we know we can get to, and then we'll drive around in circles until the car does conk out, and then work out the total mileage that it managed to do. So we've done 184 miles, I've got 78 miles of range left, I've got 27% battery. It's okay but I want to see what the other guys are doing. So, Jaguar I-Pace, how much battery you got left and what's your range? So I've got just above 10% of battery left, equates to 25 miles. What's the e-tron doing? So the e-tron has 12% left with a range of 27 miles. How's the Nissan Leaf doing? A little worse, we've got 7% battery, which gives us a range of 18 miles. What's the e-Nero doing? I'm a bit more relaxed. I've got about a third of my battery left, showing 73 miles on the range. Wow, that is doing really well, isn't it? How about the Mercedes EQC? I've got 5% of my battery left now, which is saying I've got 11 miles range left. I've literally an icon of a tortoise on my screen. <laughs> That's not good. Is this where the EQC needs to leave? It is, this is where I depart. So how do you feel about being the first to drop out? I feel like I've been the comfiest. I feel like it is the quietest car, but yeah, I'm the first to go. It's a shame. Well, here we go. This 
is the EQC dropping out. Bye bye. Good luck. Now I would like to put this Tesla into cruise control mode, but for some reason, it keeps saying cruise control not available, even though it was working before. I've also had a problem connecting my phone to it for some reason. The Bluetooth doesn't seem to disconnect other phones, nor is it able to find my phone, even though other machines can find my phone. Guys, how are you doing? So, Nissan Leaf? The Leaf's dropped down to 3% battery with 11 miles left on the trip. Where is your nearest charging point? Our nearest one is about five miles away. So, when do you need to leave the motorway? Just over a mile. How's the Jag doing? So I'm sitting on about 8%. I've got 19 miles of range left. I do have a low battery warning as well, which appeared at 21 miles. So are you just going to get off at this one as well to be safe? I think that's a good plan. How about the e-tron? Pretty much the same as the Jag, 8% and 20 miles range. So I'm also coming off just now. How about the e-Nero? What's that doing? I've got 66 miles left to go. I'm going to keep going. Well, I've got 23% charge, 73 miles remaining. So I'm going to keep going as well. So here they are now leaving. See you later, guys. Good luck. So let me tell you a little bit about this Tesla Model 3. So it's a long range version. It starts from 48,000 pounds. It has two motors combined. They have 346 horsepower. You've also got a 75 kilowatt hour battery. Tesla says that should be good for a range of 348 miles. Sounds impressive, but I don't think I'm going to quite manage that today. One of the great things about the Tesla is that if you can find one of their latest superchargers, they charge at 250 kilowatts. Then you can charge it to 80% in just 20 minutes, which is quite incredible, really. So what just happened there was a lorry shed its load. So we're just going to get out of its slipstream because it's basically just chucking loads of debris at us. Hopefully it's done no damage to the car. I think we've found the culprit of the debris. It's this thing here. Yeah, it's definitely that that it's come off. Anyway, I was saying it is the punchiest here, not 64.5 seconds, but you can get an even more powerful version if you have the performance model and that is just ridiculously quick. It's nice to drive. It's comfy over bumps, it's got good brakes, it feels quite sporty, you get a great view out. It's a bit weird jumping out of the other cars into this because there's no screen in front of you. Everything's over here, including the speedo. So it is a bit odd, but I do like it. And I think it's the best built Tesla so far. So even though it's the cheapest Tesla, it feels the nicest. Now I wanna see what's going on in the EQC, but because I haven't got Bluetooth connected in this blooming car, I'm gonna to have to use Sam to hold the phone in my face. So how's it gone in the EQC? What's happened? Because I was a bit worried about you. So it has 0% battery. It says it has no miles of range. It's driving at reduced power and speed, but I'm still moving, just circling around in the town. How many miles has the car done in total then? So the car now has done 193 miles. Oh, I wonder if you can make it over 200 miles. Right now, I'm not so sure. <laughs> well, good luck. Thank you very much. Speak to you later. All right, let's find out what's happening with the Nissan Leaf. So, Sam, if you wouldn't mind doing the honours with your phone. Still got 0% and 0 miles. It's done about like, 5 miles or so since it went to 0%. So, what kind of speed is the car letting you do? Is it just driving as normal or is it kind of reduced power or something? Power's absolutely normal, not limited it at all. Did it ever try and direct you to a charging point or did it not do anything? No, it just got a warning saying it's charging with, I think it was like 10 miles to go or something like that. But no, it didn't try and help me out at all, it just told me that I needed electricity. <laughs> okay, but you're still going. What kind of speed are you driving around at the moment for your last few miles? Between like 15 and 25 miles an hour. But going around is I'm feeling quite dizzy now. Um, that's the only side effect. Okay, well keep at it until it dies. I'll keep going. <laughs> How are you doing, Key? You all right? We've had the final warning. Charge immediately, power limited. That's 3% battery remaining. It's telling me I've got six miles left on the range, which should just about take me to the service station. So are you gonna have to get off at the next one? Very much so. I've got 5% and 15 miles 
I think I can push on a little bit further, so I'll bid you a farewell. Second place is the first loser. <laughs> oh, I know what I'm having for dinner. Humble pie? <laughs> Humble muck <nook> pie. <laughs> <laughs> well, there he goes. Off to a charging point. So things have got a little bit scary now in the Tesla. So I've got 2% battery saying plan your next charge and it's handily going. All known charging locations will be out of range soon. So it's telling me that I need to go to a charger. Where are they? I've got six miles of range left. There they are, supercharger there, nine miles. What? It's trying to take me to a supercharger, but I'm not gonna be able to go to one. I know of another location just shortly off this motorway. So I'm gonna use that instead. This is pretty scary. Hopefully I'll make it. Six miles of range left. I know it's probably about four miles to this charger, so I should just do it. It's a bit annoying that this comes up with supercharger locations, but it doesn't come up with other charging locations. They're all superchargers. That's no good. Good job of planned in advance. Otherwise I'd have been potentially stuck. I still may be stuck if I run out of I'm in charge. Oh, it's worrying. I've really reduced my pace now. I'm going to try and eke this out and make sure I get to where I need to go. It is good that it did warn me though, even though I didn't have the sat nav running. I wonder how the other guys are getting on. Hi, Will. What's happened to you? So I was just driving up to Weatherby Services. However, I got about a mile away and it hit zero. Within about half a mile of it hitting zero, the power started dropping dropping, slowly decreasing, decreasing, until it hit zero. I'm currently broken down, very cold, waiting for breakdown recovery. So how many miles did you get out of the e-tron before it stopped running? 206 miles. Now that the car's run out of battery, can it be pushed if you need to push it to a charge point? Yeah, it can. I've tried it and it can be pushed. Okay, well, good luck, Will. Speak to you soon. Right, so this is my exit here. I've got about two miles to go, four miles of range. So I should be all right. I wasn't gonna push it to the supercharger. It may have made it, don't wanna risk it. It's not worth it. I'm using Google Maps down here to direct me. I can't use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which is annoying. But obviously this is a bit of a unrealistic experiment because you would plan your route and you would stop off but we wanted to see how far they will go. We're doing something that no one would actually do if they had an electric car. It is interesting to see what range you can actually get out of them. I'm now on 1% charge, just over a mile now to go to where I think there's a charger. I hope there's a charger. I checked that there was a charging location there using the CarWow electric charging car app. Click on the pop-out banner up there. You can go check it out. Oh, traffic lights, I do not need traffic lights. Two miles of range, but thankfully my charging point's just there so I can start doing my loops. Where is the charging point? Where is it? Got it, it's over there. And I've got naught miles left of the range. I'm gonna hang out here and circle <laughs> these charging points. What we can do now though is call the EQC. So what happened to it? Hello. What happened with the EQC? After it got to naught miles and uh, naught percent, I managed to go a further sort of mile. Then it gave a very abrupt warning saying it was about to uh, shut down immediately, and it did, and it locked the motors, and I couldn't move the car. How far are you from the charging point? Rather annoyingly, I'm about 30 metres. I can see it from my window. And you can't push the car? No, I can select neutral and release the park brake, but the car won't move because the motors are actually just locked and the steering is. Okay, so what you done? Well, actually, funnily enough, I wandered into the pub, which was next to where I'd uh, abandoned the car, and asked if they had an extension lead, which they did. So I've now plugged it into a three pin from the pub, which is very kind of them. Hopefully to get enough charge to get the 30 meters to then... <laughs> Brilliant. So what kind of mileage did you do in the end in total? 194 miles. It's not bad. Just if it could have done another 30 meters, that would have been quite good. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, good luck. I'll speak to you soon. Hello Nissan, how are you doing? What's happened? Driving along, it went into limp mode for a little while. So when it was in limp mode, it was 
pretty slow, barely like got above 20 and stayed there for a little while. But that's it, just comes out. Have you been able to move it to a charging point? Did you push it? Yeah, so it had to have someone in the driver's seat because when the car detected there wasn't anyone in there, it would just go back into park. Got someone sitting there moving along and it's charging now. What mileage did you do in the end in total before you conked out? The least did just over 208 miles. So you're all right, you're charging. I'll see you soon. All right, I'm really bored of just going round and round in circles. It's taking ages to add any distance onto this car. I've got 263.6 miles clocked up. Had no miles for a while now. Right, let's go for a tour of this lovely car park. seem to want to accelerate quite as much as it used to. It's as though it has reduced the performance of the motors to conserve battery. So how are you getting on in the I-Pace? I've just run out of battery actually. What happened? Going pretty strong still and then very suddenly just kind of shuddered to a halt. So how many miles did it do? 223 in total so not too bad. And how long was it running with zero range left? I reckon near enough 20 miles. So what's happened with the car? Can you move it at all? Yeah, I can push it in neutral, but it's pretty heavy. Well, I'll leave you with that problem. I've got my own right here. Yeah, don't, don't worry, mate. I'm, I'm not completely mental. <laughs> how you doing? I'm basically trying to see how far I can go before this thing runs out of battery. So I'm just driving around in circles near that charging point there so that when it does stop, I'm yeah, close yeah. enough to push it. It's actually a sort of scientific experiment. Right, no problem. <laughs> do you work here? Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> you might be wondering, what's going on? So I'm going to carry on, <laughs> all right. I'll probably see you soon in your hotel. I think it's going to die soon, so I'm going to do some circles around by the charging points. Hey, how are you getting on in the Kia? It's just conked out on me. It's gone. So what happened? It went into the tortoise mode. It was going slower and slower and slower, and I could get maybe about eight or nine miles an hour. Now, by this point, I'm just going around the car park. And then it died, stopped suddenly. Went down to about one mile an hour and then just went twink. Can you move the car to get it to the charging point? Can you push it? I am about three yards out from it, so I should be all right. So what mileage did it stop at? 255 miles dead. Right, so I have definitely won this. I'm so bored now, it's like 10 minutes past 11. <sighs> oh, battery power too low. It's definitely gonna stop soon. Let's do one more longer loop and I think it will be dead. This is it. This is it. Car shutting down, pull over safely. Hopefully I can make it back to that charging point. Please make it back. It is literally stopping now. Come on. Come on. The charging point is just there. Battery power too low. Come on, no. 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 No, it stopped. It stopped, I'm so close to the planning charging point. Vehicle may shut down unexpectedly. It's done 269.7 miles, and I'm so close to the charging point. Hopefully we can get there. <sighs> Thankfully, it does let you roll it, because I think we might just get there to the charger. Go on, keep pushing. Push, push. <laughs> so unfair on them. Come on. They're having to push it up a hill. Oh, it's a hill. Oh, God. <coughs> Almost there. 
Come on, guys, you can do it. <laughs> Okay, I think we're good. The car has now stopped completely. Okay, let's hope this charging cable will reach the car. Please reach the car. Yes, it reaches the car. That's the first success. Now can I operate it? So I've connected it to the car. I then just tap my card against that. Hit start and it should Start charging, and it is charging. <sighs> so then, in the end, what exactly happened? Well, the Mercedes EQC ran out of battery first at 194 miles, which was far enough to go from Greater London to Weatherby. That's 75% of its claimed range. Interestingly, modern diesel cars will do about 75% of their claimed economy figures. Next to drop out was the Audi e-tron. It stopped at 206 miles, which was 81% of its claimed range. The Nissan Leaf E Plus came to a stop next. It lasted 208 miles. That's an impressive 87% of its claimed range. Third was the Jaguar I-Pace. It traveled 223 miles before conking out, which was 76% of its claimed range. The Kia E Nero lasted second longest, managing 255 miles before stopping. That's 90% of its claimed range, which is a terrific result. But the Tesla Model 3 long range went the furthest and won the challenge. It did 270 miles, which was 78% of its potential claimed range, which meant it went far enough to go from Greater London to Newcastle on Tyne, so easily enough range for anyone wanting to switch to electric power. Hi everyone, you'll be pleased to know that I did get back safely. And since getting back, I found something out about the Mercedes EQC. Turns out that if someone had been sat in the driver's seat when someone else was trying to push it, it would have allowed itself to be pushed a short distance. Eventually though, it would lock up its wheels again. It does that though to protect its motors. In fact, all of the electric cars on the test shouldn't be pushed or towed particularly far or at high speed because that can damage their motors. Though the Tesla, interestingly, does have a specific tow mode. Another thing I found out is that none of the cars would actually find a charging point when you were just driving them along and they're going low if the sat-nav wasn't working. If the sat-nav was working with a route guidance operational, it would have taken you to a charging point as part of the route guidance. But then again, how often do you drive around with your sat-nav running unless you're going somewhere unfamiliar? That's why we run it that way, because it's just a little bit more normal. Anyway, thanks for watching. Oh, if you want to watch some of the videos, they're down below over there. And if you click over there, I've actually got the best deal on what I think is the best all-round electric car in the world. So yeah, click over there to see the deal for it and which car I think is the very best. I'm not telling you yet, just click there. <laughs>